What is up folks, how's it going? It's Watch from MW Technology, and recently I've been testing out a new projector from BenQ, the GP500. This is a mid-range home theater solution that offers a complete out-of-the-box experience, allowing you to set up this thing no matter where you are, and allowing you to basically use just this projector for your entire home theater setup. So that means, unlike other projectors, you're gonna have to deal with long setup times, as well as address your audio system separately. This is basically a complete 4K projection system with smart automated setup processes as well as a built-in Android TV and an integrated four chamber speaker system. Now regarding the advantages on the setup compared to a traditional projector where you're gonna have to figure out your exact screen size based on your throw distance, then mount the projector accordingly, figure out your uh, zoom and focusing setting on the lens, keystone correction, etc., etc. Basically setting up a traditional projector is a pain in the butt and can be a lengthy and cumbersome process. But with the GP500, the setup process is the fastest I've ever encountered with using any projector. Uh, basically, you can mount it any way you like, whether that's on a tabletop surface, on axis, off axis, projecting on a wall or on a proper screen. Now, I did mount it on the ceiling on a projector mount, and we do have a 120 inch screen that we DIY'd a number of years ago. If you wanna make your own, check out that video in the description. And all I did for the setup process was turn on the projector, go into the menu installation section, go into screen fit and using its optical sensor mounted at the front of the projector, it will automatically detect whether there's a display in front of the projector, adjust all the parameters to make a perfect fit, as well as do the auto focusing. This is pretty mind blowing to me because in the past, I've always had to make little micro adjustments to the projector amount to fit the screen right and then adjust the keystone correction, make sure that there's no over vertical distortion going on, figuring out the exact zoom and focusing settings, etc., etc. But with this, with in under 15 seconds, I'm pretty much rocking and rolling with the touch of a button. Now, on top of the automated screen fit system, you also have 2D keystone correction, which allows you to basically adjust for both height and vertical discrepancies in your setup. So, if you want to mount uh, your projector a little bit off axis to the right, left, up, or down. That basically means you don't necessarily need to have the projector directly in front of the uh, display. You can have it off to the side, out of the way. Great for smaller, more cramped, multi-purpose spaces. You also have something called obstacle avoidance, which will detect things that are mounted onto the uh, display surface, whether that's a painting or a shelving unit, and adjust the orientation and size of your projector screen accordingly. This sometimes works better than other times, but you can always make manual adjustments with the corner fit option. And as we mentioned before, you do also have autofocusing, but uh, sometimes it can be a little bit hit and miss as well. So every time you do use the autofocusing feature, you can also make micro adjustments manually, which is definitely something I would recommend because nine times out of 10, the autofocusing is gonna get you in the ballpark of being in focus, but not exactly in focus compared to your manual adjustments. Now, regarding the image quality of the GP500, once you get up and going, is pretty remarkable. You do have a 4K native resolution of 3840 by 2160 at 60 hertz refresh rate. You can also go down to 1080p at 120 hertz, a little bit better for a gaming setup, but keep in mind the input lag is quite long at 25 milliseconds. Now in terms of the light source, we're using a four LED DLP system in here that will give you a maximum brightness of up to 1500 lumens in normal lamp power mode. And uh, that's fine, especially if you're gonna be in a dimly lit situation where you can completely black out your room where you're gonna get the best image, contrast, and colors. But if you're gonna be using this in a, a brighter ambient environment in the living room, say during the daytime, with a little bit of ambient light spillover, you're gonna not get the best image quality and definitely lower contrast ratios. And uh, this is definitely not recommended for outdoor projection use unless it's completely at pitch 
Black Knight. Now regarding the image quality itself, in optimal settings, you're going to find that the colors are vibrant. You have a pretty decent contrast ratio of 10,000 to 1. You do have high dynamic range capabilities, so the colors based on the content that you're watching are fairly vibrant and accurate enough, especially if you go further with some custom calibrations. Additionally, if you want to consume some 3D content and have some glasses that support DLP link technology, you can utilize and watch some of that 3D content with this projector. But for me personally, I'm more of a 2D man and I loved my experience with this projector. The image quality was generally extremely sharp with native HDR 4K content. And after spending several hours with this thing, I would say from an image quality standpoint, it's almost as good as any commercial movie theater experience. Now in terms of the light source lifetime, you're looking at in normal power mode about 20,000 hours and in eco mode about 30,000 hours. You do uh, experience a little bit of a noise difference between those two modes, not by much, basically two decibels. I was sitting about five feet away from the projector and in normal power mode, it registered around 30 decibels and in eco or eco smart mode, about 28 decibels. It's pretty whisper quiet and one of the big highlights of the projector. Now let's talk about the big unique factor on the GP500, which is the built-in chamber integrated speaker system mounted underneath the projector. And it has five watts per chamber, so 20 watts in total, making it more than loud enough for most medium to smaller size spaces. It has a built-in Trivolo DSP system, which will emulate a surround or stereo effect. And based on whether the listener is positioned left, right, or center of the projector, it will adjust accordingly and you can set their parameter in the menu so you get the best stereo surround effect. Now there's a built-in five band EQ so if you want to mess around uh, with some of the uh, frequency response parameters you can do so but out of the box it sounds pretty good for any kind of media consumption that you get to do on a casual basis. So it's great for um, listening to music, watching TVs, and it has a fairly good bass response, surprisingly deep and a fairly rich coming out of a single source. Now, is this going to replace any kind of dedicated surround sound system? Absolutely not. And if you're serious into getting the best possible experience, uh, you would eventually want to get some sort of proper speaker system around you. But as an all-in-one solution, it's definitely fairly good for what it is, comparable to a single speaker soundbar. And you can even use it as a dedicated Bluetooth speaker with the projector off. You can pair it to your phone and listen to music with the speaker system alone. Now, in terms of the I.O., there are technically three HDMI 2.0 ports in here. And uh, the third one is uh, located inside, uh, which is used primarily uh, with the integration of the Android BenQ stick that comes with this projector, which is a smart Android TV stick. Basically has Bluetooth, uh, Wi-Fi, everything you need to stream all your favorite content, except for the Netflix app. Unfortunately, that's not natively installed, but there is a workaround solution where you can download the Netflix apps via the apps manager. Uh, a little bit cumbersome, but doable nonetheless. But basically with that Android TV stick, basically makes this a smart 4K home theater projector solution. But in terms of the other connectivity, specifically located at the back, you have two HDMI connections as well as a USB type A connection for providing one amp as well as two amp power for extra devices, as well as double up as a media USB thumb drive readers. And it'll read pretty much most uh, drive formats except for XFAT but I'll read FAT32 and NTFS. Furthermore, if you do want to use a dedicated audio system, you do have optical out as well as a 3.5 millimeter output for headphones or other external speakers. Lastly, regarding the remote control, it's very similar to what we got on the TK850i. So it utilizes primarily infrared uh, for communicating to the projector. It also has integrated Bluetooth to communicate to the Android TV dongle that's located inside the projector. The only improvements that I would suggest is perhaps having uh, some sort of a picture mode setting so you can perhaps go into eco mode or change 
the actual profile of your image quality. So if you want to get a brighter setting in one circumstance and a lower setting, that would be real nice, as well as having a backlight would be a major benefit since it's pretty certain you're going to be using this remote control in a dimly lit environment. So this is where the projector is best suited for, and it's hard to see something that has no lights whatsoever on it. Apart from that, in conclusion, I would say that the BenQ GP500 is for anybody that requires a complete out of the box home theater projector solution. That means they don't want to spend any effort on the setup, want to have a no brainer solution in terms of placing the projector in any specific area and not having to finick around with too much settings and having a no extra speaker system since we have that built in as well. So if you're looking for something that has excellent image quality on top of all those factors, I think this is definitely one to check out. Check out the description if you want to know more information about the GP500 and I would love to know if you guys are using any kind of front projector yourself for viewing content would you rather have a tv or a projector for a home theater viewing experience love to know your thoughts and if you have any specific questions definitely let me know if you haven't done so already please make sure you subscribe give us a thumbs up and have notifications turned on so you get our videos once they become available i want to thank you guys so much for your support Thanks for watching. Thanks for Ben Q for uh, giving us a chance to take a look at this thing. And we'll see you real soon in the next one. Take care.